All right, guys, so we're back again here, and we're here with Kayla. Now, you run a guide service, right? Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the meme and your guide service that you offer here. And uh, I mean, this is going to be, I guess, specifically up in the Upper Bay, correct? Correct. Um, so my name is Kayla, and I run River Queen Guide Service on the Upper Bay, um, mainly the tributaries of the Upper Bay, uh, Susquehanna River specifically, um, kind of all over. Uh, and I do all kinds of guide services for it, mainly light tackle. I can do in the springtime shad fishing, white perch fishing. Um, I do striped bass and I do smallmouth bass up in Pennsylvania on the Susquehanna River as well. And then when summertime hits, the snakeheads take over my life from, <laughs> from then all the way, all the way through till September. And once the fall cool down starts to show, I do striped bass and back into smallmouth again. And once winter hits, it's kind of up in the air from there. Right, so. <laughs> wherever it's biting, right? Yeah, whatever, whatever bites in the winter time. There you go. So we're gonna focus today about these, uh, like the Upper Bay um, area here. Uh, and that's a big area there. I mean, there's a lot of creeks, rivers, you can fish up there, but they're all primarily kind of the same. I mean, I know there's a couple that are different, uh, a couple of rivers up there that are a little bit different than the others. But the whole area up there, it's way different than Blackwater. Right. I mean, you don't fish it really. I mean, certain things you fish the same, but the structure and everything's going to be different. So tell us a little bit about, like, what you're encountering out there, like up there. It's talking about, like, you know, structure, what you want to look for, and where you want to fish around. So um, in the Upper Bay, we have a very, very thick hydrilla grass uh, growth up there, whereas I know down in Blackwater you don't get the grass as much. You see more lily pads and falling down trees and those, that's the kind of structure you look for up there, but for down there. But up in the upper bay, what I'm always looking for is hydrilla. Once I find that grass, I know there's got to be some kind of snakehead stuck in there. Um, and I think the reason why that they like the grass so much is because in the summer, it holds the heat at night. So during the daytime, the sun comes out, it heats that water and that grass up, and then at night it cools off. Those snakeheads just kind of hang in there to keep warm. Um, and I think that's the main difference or what I'm always looking for um, up in the Upper Bay is just wherever there's grass, there's gotta be a snakehead around. And it holds bait fish, it holds all the little bluegills and little bass. Yeah. Any anything really, you're you know you're driving through, and once you put your sunglasses on and have your polarized glasses, you can see all kinds of life within that grass. That's an essential, though, you know, the sunglasses, polarized yeah. sunglasses, especially because you're sight fishing a lot yeah. of times, so you got to be able to see through there. And, you know, touch on based on that temperature mm -hmm. uh, factor there. I know, like for black water, we're talking about mud flats and stuff like that to hold heat. That's a big thing, especially for early in the, yeah. I guess early in the year, like right now, right? Mm -hmm. Finding those patches of hydrilla and focusing around them. Now, lures. I know a lot of guys that come through the store are always saying, man, I can't really fish around this hydrilla. I can't get anything through there. Uh, the only thing I'm throwing is stop water. Talk about a, a little bit about what you use up there when yeah, you're fishing so, around that structure. Yeah, a lot of guys, um, you know, they think of a chatterbait. That's the go-to for a snakehead. Uh, lure um, but for the upper bay for me it's always been a top top water top toad um, kind of lure because you can't throw a chatterbait in thick hydrilla grass without immediately pulling in 10 pounds of hydrilla <laughs> like it's yeah. just it, it's unfeasible at that point so right. a weedless top toad kind of frog um, and you need something that makes a lot of flopping a lot of noise um, because once you throw it along these edges of the grass or in a in a hole within the grass, you want to kind of piss these fish off almost. So something that's loud, something that makes a lot of flopping noise or like a popping toad, something to grab their attention and pull them out of the grass and be like, who the heck's coming into my home here? Like, <laughs> you know, they're, they're going to get pissed off and they're going to eat it. Um, the big thing though with throwing hollow body floating frogs is once they strike, everybody's immediate reaction is to set the hook. But with a hollow body, what I'm finding the best is be, give them two to three seconds if you can. Once they strike, with snakeheads, what I've realized is they're not gonna, like a striped bass or something, when they hit a top water, they're, they're hitting it to just kind of 
feed it and kill it. With a snakehead, every time I've seen them strike, it's with their mouths and they come up, bite it, and hold on to it and don't let go. So give them just a couple seconds before you set the hook to get all the, you know, in their right. bony mouths and stuff like that. So that's the biggest thing. I've and like you said, that's the biggest thing there. We all done it, we all do it, we sit there, and it, it happens all the time. Every trip, it's one of those things you get that first strike, you get sighted, and right. you just swing for the fences. And that's one of those things, you know, you put that lure out. Right. Now, with gear, fishing around that, you know, uh, I guess, heavy hydrilla, uh, all the grass and everything, pound test of line that you're using. Are you using braid, mono, and the pound test that you're using? What do you recommend? Um, so I use straight braid. I don't use, um, I don't go braid to, look, to a leader because that leader knot will catch on to the hydrilla and it just gets loaded up and frustrating and you're ending up pulling grass through and right. so I just use straight braid um, I use 30 pound braid uh, I don't a lot of guys use 65 85 pound Sometimes braid overkill, yeah, yeah and it can be an overkill and it shortens your ability to cast um, not that you need to cast out super super far because you're not finding you know you don't want to cast out really far and then end up hooking a snakehead in this hydrilla and have to yank it through a hundred yards of grass so you know it's just all about you're working very close to the boat or your kayak or whatever um, and you don't need super heavy braid like I said I use just 30 pound and it seems to do the trick oh yeah couldn't so. agree more with that I've seen guys put you know like you said 80 in there and <laughs> it's not necessary you know we're not in any super super hefty stuff that you're not going to be able to pull 30 pound through a uh, couple of questions i guess or things to go over uh, when do you think is the best time to focus on that hydro is it a thing where as soon as it comes up you want to fish it or is there like a couple times of the year that you want to focus really on that like summertime fall time what do you think is uh i guess the best time for the upper bay i guess in general too right so i think from Almost mid-July through September is when I focus most on the grass um, because it's that's when it's in full like thickness, I guess, right. and that's where they're going to be hiding the most. Usually by mid-September when we start getting those first couple cool nights, um, the grass will start to die off. And, you know, that's that's kind of when it gets a little tricky, and you'll want to start throwing some subsurface stuff along the edges of the grass lines. Um, because they're kind of in that stage of where they're hibernation, I guess, right, right. and they're going to want to start finding some mud and sink down in there. So usually from about mid-July till the end of September is when I really focus on finding those big grass patches and focusing on any hole that you can find in the middle of them. Like I said, it'll probably right. hold, it'll hold a snake head. And even through then, in those holes, you'll see fry balls. Yeah. And mom and dad are just circling around in those holes within the grass protecting their babies and if you if you throw some kind of top water frog in there in the middle in the middle of yeah. their babies hold on because some, some mom and dad are going to be pissed <laughs> yeah and the, the cool thing about that it's like you know we all wait for that all, all the fry balls to come out and it's the most exciting time for like a snake fishing i guess right. but you can see them throughout the year oh they, yeah oh yeah we all think that it's like a specific time frame but no, no. Uh, I'm sure it's, you know, all year long that you see them up there yeah. too, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think with the upper bay, from what I've learned, is I'm really picking up on moon phases. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think with up here, we're almost a moon phase behind you guys on, on black water in the lower bay. Right. So, you know, your spawning is going to start almost a moon earlier than what than what I'm gonna see. So I kind of pay attention to that yeah. too. Like once I hear guys, you know, down in Blackwater saying, oh, we just saw our first couple fry balls. I'm like, okay, the next the next moon that I get, I, I'll, I should start seeing some fry yeah. balls as well. So that's moon, a good tip there. I yeah. mean, a lot of guys think that it's the same thing throughout the state or throughout the region. No, and I, it's not. Yeah, it's yeah. not. And Blackwater, the temperatures down there I heat up way faster than up here. Um, just because those northern tributaries like the Susquehanna, um, the Patapsco, all of those are, you know, you get the snow melt from up north. I mean, water temps in the Susquehanna right now are still in the low 40s, whereas down in Blackwater, I think they're what? Oh, mid, mid last to upper week 50s? I was marking uh, 
highest point of the day, the warmest point of the day, I was, I got up to 62. Yeah. On like, you know, two foot of water, right. a creek like that. So like you said, it's it's a drastic change. It's a huge, huge difference. And that's one of those so. things you guys gotta understand too out there. It's uh, every section of the state could almost be fished differently uh, throughout, you know, the Potomac, Upper Bay, and Blackwater will have a couple little things to make them, you know, unique in a way. Right. Um, and now, I'm sure you can find all these general areas throughout most of these rivers up in the Upper Bay. Bush River, all these places up there have great spots to go check out. So, it's more of covering water, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Covering water and you can find somewhere without someone else. That's also <laughs> key. So, yeah. and uh, the other thing is just putting in your time. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not a guarantee every trip. You know, I've I that's why I'm getting more gray hairs because of these <laughs> fish. You know, I, one day I can go out and catch five or six, no problem. The very next day, same conditions, I won't see a fish. So it's just putting in your time, really focusing on different patterns and different locations. And just don't give up. Yeah, they're <laughs> I know smart it's, fish. It's, I mean, they're very smart. One of the smartest ever. I've yeah, ever done that's one of the so. things why you know, like I'm so intrigued into catching these fish because patterns don't hold for right. much long, like no more than like a day or two, if that. Right. Uh, I mean, they're super smart fish. It's one of those things where, honestly, for me, sometimes it's more about trying to figure them out and feeling that you know, good feeling once you figure it oh, out than catching them boring. sometimes. So and sometimes boring. it might take a whole day to figure it mm -hmm. out, but it makes it even more uh, worth it when you catch one fish yep. or a couple fish, and you know. There's windows throughout the days, so and, and it's like you said, you couldn't say it any better. You got to take your time, putting your time in. Don't give up because I remember when I first started going after these fish back in like the mid 2000s, 2008, 9, 10. It took me a full year to get my first fish. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it, it was one of those things where you're just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. So. Other than that, any other things, I guess, tips or anything else you want to add for, you know, the Upper Bay style of fishing uh, you're doing up there? Oh, no, I'm, like I said, just, you know, look for the hydrilla. Um, if you don't know what it is, trust me, when you see it in the water, it's almost this plumy, fluffy, and you'll get stuck in it and get frustrated with it. But, you know, yeah. once you find the grass, you know, just try around, fish around it and, you know, figure out if, if there's little bait fish in there if you're just a lot of it too is just your vibe you know if you, you feel like this is a good spot if you think this is you know capable of a snakehead it most likely is right um and just don't give up keep, and, keep fishing one of the things i guess we've got to say too it's like I, I mean i gotta ask you it's do they kind of give themselves away just like in black water do they come up obviously they, they gotta breathe air and whatnot like you can see them sometimes or is it a little bit different when you're fishing a hydrilla up there not really so they'll come up and they'll gulp you know gulp for air but it's very quick so right. it's almost like you know when you're sight fishing for them and whatnot they'll come up gulp for air and then immediately go back down can you see them swimming and, through the hydrilla at times or and no honestly not, it's not... it's so thick you know i don't normally see a lot of movement the, the only time I do see that is when I'm running the trolling motor and I'll be scare coming up and I'll scare them. And that's when I'm like, so, you know, <laughs> there was one right there. Right. What, you know, what was going on? So, yes. yeah, it's kind of just a, not a guessing game, but a guessing game. Almost. Right. Gonna, now, let me ask you this. Do you have any favorite colors when it comes to top water? Um... Or you kind of same thing, trying to kind of switching in. I don't necessarily have a favorite color. I have a favorite, um, I guess, on the loudness of it. How much popping and how much like these, like with these, these back tails on these frogs flop and make so much noise when you're, you know, reeling up through the water. That to me, it's the noise factor that attracts the fish Right, so you're looking so, for the noise, really, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's not, you know, not necessarily a color. Um, I do like pink frogs, um, yeah. and I, <laughs> I do like purple, like purple frogs, yeah. the brighter colors, um, but I've also caught a ton of fish on straight black, you know, dark frogs, um, but like, I think it's more of a noise thing for right. up, up in the upper bay. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of great information there for you guys. Obviously, focus on those uh, flats uh, with hydro and whatnot, and uh, 
Hey, get some, some get something loud. Do you guys have any questions yeah. for Kayla? Or anyone on Facebook want to comment? Um, so you can find me on Facebook or Instagram. Um, it's just my name, Kayla. You brought some Kayla. cards and today, right? Yeah, I yeah. do have some cards. But yeah, for everyone on, tell everyone on Facebook how to find you. Uh, yeah, you can just search my name. Uh, it's just Kayla Hale and shoot me a message and I'll get back to you. There you go. Well, thank you for being on here with us today. Thank you. A lot of great information about the upper van. I know a lot of people were waiting for this one <laughs> for up there since, uh, it's kind of like, I guess, not a newer thing, but there are more people, I guess, yeah, thinking about that upper bay now. Yeah, it seems like the new hot trend is yeah. the, the upper bay snakehead. <laughs> <laughs> well, already, thank you. Uh, we appreciate you being here, and thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you.